Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Wipia. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you for coming and I'm really glad to have you here. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about how to handle being judged. And in my previous video, I did three things to know before you judge other people. And while I was doing that video, I said that I was going to talk to people that have been judged. But then in the course of the video, I think I got carried away and so I didn't talk about it. And most of you were asking that I do how to handle being judged. Okay. And so that's why I'm here to just do a video on how to handle being judged. If you've been talked down upon, if you have been belittled by the words of other people, or if you've basically suffered from judgmental attitudes of friends, family, relations, and everything, this video is for you. Okay. So without saying so much, let's get right into today's video. Now my first point, okay, on how to handle being judged is prayer. As cliche as this honestly speaking you should pray and I'm going to give you three reasons why you should pray number one you should pray because if it concerns you and if it burdens your heart it burdens God also first Peter chapter 5 verse 7 says that we should cast our burdens onto him because he cares for us honestly God cares about us and if it burdens your heart honestly take it to him in prayer and this hymn makes us understand what a friend we have in Jesus it says it says that oh what needless pain we bear all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer and so I think that a lot of times we just go through unnecessary struggles because we don't pray about it secondly I'd say you should pray because prayer makes you discern and in discerning it will you will you better understand if you are in a refiner's fire and I'm going to explain this refiner's fire kind of thing because I think a lot of us cannot tell the difference between we being attacked by the devil and we going through a refiner's fire and I say a refiner's fire because refiner's fire usually burns you to all the chaff is gone and then you become more and more like Christ okay so what if or assuming God wants to birth a ministry through you that's why he has put you in that situation where people talk about you and downplay you and everything so it's it's prayer that will make you discern and know how to handle it so instead of going all complaining and all sad and all broken hearted about life i think you should pray so that you are able to discern and know if you are going through a finest fire right kenneth hagen is going to be a perfect example of someone that went through a finest fire i mean he was sick and that's how come he, his ministry was big and you everyone that knows Kenneth Hagen, anyone that reads his books knows that our father is a father of faith. When we are talking about faith, you can't mention the fathers of faith without mentioning Kenneth Hagen's name. If you know Pastor Mildred very well, she went through her finest fire. She couldn't give birth. She was in a, she was in a terrible situation. People gossiped about her and everything. And today she's she's handling a ministry where I mean she prays for people and people are are, are becoming if I should put it that way or they are having like the fruits of the womb and everything so you should be able to discern okay like one thing is that prayer makes you discern so you should pray another thing I'd say is that prayer gives you strength if there is anything at all I don't know if you've actually felt so down and then you just go and pray listen to one worship song and then you are just feeling okay it's not like the situation has died but the mere fact that you took it to God made everything Made, made you feel like you can conquer the world all over again. That's what prayer does. So if you are found in a situation like that, my first point, in as, in as much as it may sound cliche, in as much as it may sound like everything you say we should pray about, pray. My second point would be set your heart and set yourself. Set your heart and set yourself, honestly speaking, because... <laughs> It's true, I'm not justifying the fact that people have the right to talk about you and do and say anything to you, be rude to you, talk down on you, and say demeaning things to you. I am not justifying them at all. 
but I honestly believe that sometimes, just maybe sometimes, you might be at fullness. So probably it's true that what you're doing is wrong. It might add, it might add some to make it look like. Mm, I mean, you know, gossip. They might always add some to massage the whole thing and make the story. But then remember the saying that says to everyone, "Rumor there's an iota of truth in it." So definitely, there might be some truth in what they are saying. So you should check yourself, and when you check yourself, be ready to get correction, be ready to get help. Okay. So maybe you've been you've been around the block. When I say you've been around, you've been sleeping around with boys or sleeping around with girls who are talking about you and everything. It's true. I'm not saying that they have the right to talk about you or anything of the sort. But what you are doing is true and it's wrong. Even though they are not supposed to talk about you, unfortunately, they are doing it. And you also want to stop it. So you should get help and be ready to be helped. It's not like because, be, 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 because they are talking about you and everything, you just following this because oh after all they are saying everybody knows me like that so let me just stay like that no you should be ready to get help and your heart should be ready to accept help be teachable that is the point be teachable find out from other people like this thing that i'm doing this this is what people say i'm doing is it really true how do i solve it how do i change how do i become a better person right so this is something that i think you should do so in searching your heart as well i think that anybody that is in any particular kind of situation, any sense of situation, or anything that you want to get out of. Okay? I personally believe that you can't do right without God. Okay? Because his word says that even our, our good deeds are like filthy rags before him. Which is actually true. You can't do right without God. And I keep saying this, that there is no truth outside the word of God. And you can't do right outside Jesus. So I suggest all due respect that you give your life to Christ at this moment and let God help you. Surrender your life to Him because if the Bible tells us in Jeremiah that the heart of a man is desperately wicked, you should know that wickedness abounds in our human heart as normal people. It's in our nature to be wicked, it's in our nature to be evil, it's in our nature to not do right. And you know that from the depths of your soul, the fault is from you. Surrender your life to God and let God help to a Bible believing church, a church where they can actually help you grow and change for the better, find help, honestly get help. Wisdom is not in one person's head, and, and I feel like there are people that have walked the path that you are already walking. You are, you are not really about fresh, like there's nothing new under the sun, right? You are not really new to it, and so if you ask people. They can actually help you to get out of whatever situation that you are in faster, right? So get help. Basically, get help. I also believe that the state of your heart is very important. I'm still on the same point about you searching your heart. The state of your heart is very important. And I say that the state of your heart is very important because usually when we hear certain things about ourselves, okay, the first thing we do is act surprised. True. I'm not saying this. Let me be simple. So like I said, I'm saying it because it has do me before. It's not like it's not like what I'm saying is abstract. Like first of all, mind you that I'm not coming here to say things that I think you should do when I am not even practicing this. I'm talking to myself as well. Okay. So let's get that point straight. That I'm talking to myself as well. Okay. So don't don't the state of your heart is important. When you hear something bad about yourself, the way you act is matters, the way you receive it matters, okay? Have an open heart. Honestly speaking, it will go a long way to help you. Have an open heart. Don't sob and come and complain. A lot of us do this. Me serve, I'm a culprit. When you hear something about yourself, you call your favorite person in this life, and then you come and complain, and then you, you say, I'm like this, and then you say, I'm like that, you complain, sir. Stop complaining. The state of your heart is very important. I'm not saying that the people that talk about you are justified. Believe you me, they are not justified. And God is going to deal with them in a different way. Yours is not to deal with them. Yours is to accept what they are saying. Work on it if it's something that should be 
worked on. If it's not supposed to be worked on, forget about it. People will always be people. But then they're complaining, the sulking, the whatever, whatever it is. It won't help you. And honestly, I think God is very interested in the way we react to certain things, okay? You see, a lot of us pray that God give me a heart that is patient, a heart that is full of love. What if, okay? That situation, that particular situation, you've heard it. And then that's your test to demonstrate a heart of love or a heart of patience. But you blow it. That situation will keep coming so you pass the test to have a loving heart and to have a patient heart. So let me just give you this cue. Maybe it is your test to be patient and kind and loving. Like the way, you see, you are not supposed to be nice to only those that are nice to you. Then what's the point in being a Christian? Because the Bible says that even unbelievers, they do good to those who do good to them. So you, what makes you different is you doing good to those who are wicked to you. He says, love your enemies and pray for those. Pray for them who, hmm, pray for them. So you're praying for them, you're even loving them. You pray, because we all pray for people we love. So if you are being forced to pray for someone that you don't love, of course, out out of the prayer I pray, you get to love the person some way, somehow, right? And so that is the same thing. So the state of your heart is very important. The way you receive it. When they come and tell you that this person said this about you, stagger. You have to relax more. And, and, and allow the state of your heart to be pure. Because we have to be incorruptible in this corruptible. That's what a lot of us forget. That at the end of the day, it is not what they did to you. It is how you reacted. It is how you reacted. Look at Stephen. Stephen is a typical example. Look at it. They were stoning the man to death. They were stoning. I'm very sure that even some of us, it's not a joking person that would kiss me. Not me. I've changed. But if, <laughs> I've changed, honestly, I've changed. It's not a joking kissing that you kiss the person. You will kiss the person with your heart and you. You get. But then, Stephen, Stephen said, Father, forgive them. And a lot of theolog- theologians say that it's because of Stephen's prayer. That's why Saul was converted. That's why Paul became who he is to be. So, I mean, this is food for thought. For, for thought. This is food for thought. This is something that we should, we should learn from, okay? So the state of your heart is very important.